My name's Mick Fault. Uh, I served initially in the Royal Corps Transport and then in the Royal Engineers for approximately 10 years. I heard about Water Uncovered through uh, BLESMA, the British Limitless Sex Servicemen's Association, and they sent a letter out saying the Water Uncovered were looking for injured ex servicemen to go to Waterloo to, um, on a dig, and I was extremely uh, enthusiastic about doing that. But unfortunately, because of COVID, I couldn't go to Waterloo, but I was included in the Fines programme. The Fines programme covered wide-ranging content. We looked at the archive from Waterloo, the objects that have been found on the battlefield, and they helped us to work out how Hougamont Farm had changed through time. We looked at the life of a musket ball, um, the materials it was made of, how it was used, what that could tell us when we find musket balls on the battlefield, whether they've been impacted or not used at all. We also were very excited by the story of James Callum. It was something that came up and none of us were expecting it to come from the objects because it actually came from one of our participants. I got involved in Waterloo and covered uh, by my husband Mick and his involvement with the project basically by making a comment that uh, I believed I had a, a relative who had fought at the Battle of Waterloo. When I was on the fires programme, I'd spoke to the people there and said, oh, I believe my wife had a, an ancestor that was at Waterloo. And the archaeologists there started to look into him. Also, we did a bit of our own research, but they were much better at it. And they, they found out an enormous amount about him. We started to find documents and didn't think there would be much there but it allowed us to reconstruct his whole life story. His documents to do with his marriage and his death told us so much about him and the milestones of his life. His army career documents told us more about him as a soldier. And his obituary, which was really unexpected, told us about him as a person, something that was really unexpected and really exciting. I knew about James Callum via a letter that um, my father had received from a cousin who was doing some family research back in 1994. And although it's mainly on, on his family, uh, there was a throwaway line within there that um, one of her relatives had been a hero at the Battle of Waterloo. I also uh, have a snuff box that had been passed on to uh, my father when, when his mother died, which is engraved uh, to James Callum uh, from his son James. And uh, I was always intrigued as to where that maybe fitted into the family history. When he joined the army, he was a dyer and he gave up that trade to join the Four Farsha Militia. Pretty soon after that, he joined the 71st Highland Regiment of Foot. And eventually he ended up in the Netherlands fighting. When he came back, he went to the peninsula and we know he fought through a number of battles. The most interesting thing I found out about James was his battles that he'd fought through all through the peninsula war, six of them. And the fact that he managed to get through without a scratch, apart from getting frostbite on his fingers crossing the Pyrenees, before he even got to Waterloo, uh, it, it, it was quite amazing. James was awarded the General Service Medal with six clasps for his involvement in the six battles he'd fought in, in the Peninsula Wars and then subsequently the Waterloo Medal as well. We know that the family sold the medals in 1912 and after that they weren't seen for quite a while. In the 1980s they were sold again in Christie's and then much more recently in the early 2000s they were sold by Dix, Noon and Webb. So the medals have passed around a few different hands. What I've, I found out about uh, th that whole campaign is how almost medieval it was. The armies moved across ground, but were seldom fed by the, uh, uh, by the army. They had to forage. And even things like their boots weren't replaced. So they were walking barefoot across mountains. It, it, it brought home our hard a soldier's life was then. When James was discharged, a memoir written about him by his colonel says, James Callum served in the 9th Company of the 71st Regiment at the Battle of Waterloo under my command, and I have reason to know that he participated in all the services that all the corps engaged in at Walcheren, Portugal, Spain and France. James Callum bears the best possible character from the captain of his company. 
and I believe him to be a well-conducted man and excellent soldier. We also looked into the local history of Elgin, finding out that he lived in various houses in the area and even his gravestone that showed us he was buried with his family. It was good to find out that James had lived until he was 85. Uh, he became a carpenter when he returned to Scotland. Uh, he had five children, uh, one of whom was my relative uh, Isabella. Um, his son James was an interesting character. Um, via Waterloo discovered it was found out that uh, he uh, went first of all to America and then to Australia and uh, it's him who uh, arranged for the, the snuff box uh, to, be, to be given to James at some stage uh, in his life. There was one thing that came out from James's service, the story he told, apparently in Elgin, probably over a dram, that he was advancing with his company and they were using grape shot against them. And one of, part of the grape shot hit his bayonet and spun him round like a top, so he was facing the other way. But when he'd recovered and started advancing again, he found his base, bayonet facing him. It bent it right the way around. It was learning about a person from the past and almost meeting them afresh through all of the documents. Each session, we would come together and new research would be brought to light and everybody would get really excited about the new facts we'd found out about our friend from the past. And we'd find out all sorts of things about his life and his achievements. It was really good to be involved in this programme, obviously via finding out information about my relative. But it was, it was, I was honoured to be included. It was a really good thing to, to be involved in doing. I got a great deal out of finding this programme, much more than I expected to. The artefacts that we looked at that were found on the battlefield gave me a great insight into how the day went and categorising them into where they were at that particular time and how the, the, the battle progressed through the day. Plus the fact that I was with a group of like-minded ex-service people that were enthusiastic and as, as interested as I was about the whole experience. The Finds programme has been a really rewarding experience. It's been exciting to share new stories and to learn new stories, working with our veterans and their lived experience to help understand the objects from the Waterloo battlefield. The other thing that's really exciting for us is bringing them to the public to share them, these new stories with them as well. Through events that Waterloo Uncovered will be attending and bringing our Finds collections for people to handle and understand more about the Battle of Waterloo. So the snuff box is in really good condition, isn't it? It's um, all of the, the engraving on it and the decoration is really still quite crisp. And you've got the engraving on the top presented to James Callum by his son, James. Um, and inside, we also found on both parts of the snuff box, the um, hallmarks. Um, yeah. Mick, you, I think... I think it's Birmingham with it, sir. And I believe, I, I think that his son probably gave that to James because he was going off to America and probably never expected to go back. I mean, the fact that he ended up in Australia, but uh, he, he went to America for some years. So uh, it's a sort of gift I think you would have given your father to say goodbye. It does feel like it, doesn't it? Yeah. And um, I think when we looked at the hallmarks, we thought it was from at some point in the 1830s. Yeah. So that might fit with maybe him buying it as an object that was already made and then having it engraved. Yeah. And then giving it to his father as, as a parting gift. Yeah, so to remember him by. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, Mick, in a nutshell, what did you actually find out about him? Well, we found quite a lot about him. He didn't just fight at Waterloo. He fought at all the way through the Peninsula Wars. He was with the 71st, and he fought in six battles. He had six classes on his GSM medal. He also lost tips of his fingers going across the Pyrenees, so he was actually a Chelsea pensioner as well. Uh, he fought at the Battle of Waterloo, and that was the end of his career. He went home 
to Scotland and became a carpenter. So now, I mean, have you been to Waterloo before? Never been here before, no. How does it feel? It is absolutely amazing to be here and in particular amazing to be on the spot where James actually fought in the battle. This is it, we've been able to actually reconstruct from the deployment of the regiments exactly where your relative was placed in the line and where he would have fought and it's a bit special for me as well because literally I have spent five seasons down there at Hougamont Farm. You can see the wall that surrounds Hougamont Farm there and so that brings your relative in the battle with me in my campaign. It kind of links your ancestor with my current archaeology. It's a beautiful linkage in. So have you got any other mementos? Yes, I've got an additional link as well to the past. Because what I have is James Callum's snuff box. Oh, wow. It was presented to him by his son James. It's been in the family for years and years. Uh, it was presented to him after the Battle of Waterloo. But it's a real link to the past that I can bring that back, a piece of his actual memorabilia, and bring it back to where he actually fought. Presented to James Callum by his son, James. Another James. Yeah, and the James, that James went to America and then on to Australia. Uh, we don't know much more about him after that. He, but his father, uh, who fought here, he lived to 85. He outlived all his children. Isn't it marvellous to think that your ancestor once owned this snuff box, probably kept it in his pocket, periodically opened it up and took a pinch. Mm. You will never be able to meet him personally, but you've got this wonderful link with him. That's right, and I feel such a connection with being here and having this with me as well. Uh, so connected, it's a wonderful, peaceful spot here, but imagining what it was like all those years ago and all the, the, the action, the, the horrors of this site, and now to be here in the peace and the quiet, but also to be linked with all the, the fines, the musket balls, the pieces of metal that are coming oh, out of the soil yeah. on this, this, fine, this, this archaeological dig here, it's completely amazing to be so, here. To be as part of this dig is particularly special, I've, something I've always wanted to do. And to actually find something from the battle, or to bring it out of the ground, is, it, it's quite emotional. I, I've really enjoyed every moment of this. It's that thing that is all about the story, and the story is made by people. Mm, yes. And your ancestor was one of those people. He was part of the story, yes.